This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geeks, show number 273, recorded on August 11th, 2016. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite things. News reviews, product updates, and conversation all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Carlson, broadcasting live from a stormy Bellevue, Nebraska tonight. We have some storm, storms rolling. Through. It's been super hot. Like uh, this morning, it was like, a, or this afternoon, like 97 and 109 heat index. It was just stupid hot. But we're cool. Tonight, we're cool inside. Of course, we'll post the show. With world class show notes out at theaverageguy.tv. You can also join us on our new mobile app and we're proud to announce LastPass is signing on for another year. Of course, they sponsor the mobile app. You might want to head out there and check out LastPass. Of course, free for both desktop or mobile if you want to do it either way. If you want to hook the two together and make them work, $12 a year, super inexpensive, super great super great way to support the podcast. We want to thank LastPass for their sponsorship. We're going to talk about them here in just a little bit. And they're coming on the show in a month, so might want to get ready uh, for that. But uh, head out to HomeGadgetGeeks.com. Big buttons for fat fingers if you need to download that app. It's good to have on the road, by the way. If you're in a, if you travel a lot, it's the best way to stream the live program. So if you want to do that, head out to HomeGadgetGeeks.com. Get it downloaded today. And, of course, Home Gadget Geeks is a part of the Geeks Network. Find the link to this show and many other great podcasts at TheGeeksNetwork.com. Just a quick reminder, we're doing Home Server Show Meetup this year. Indianapolis, same place it's always been, and we're going to hang out at the Microsoft headquarters there. We'll thank Microsoft for sponsoring us during the meetup. September 17th, head out to homeserversshow.com and look up from look up or look for, it's right on the top, meetup 2016. It's 25 bucks to be there, the best $25 you'll spend on a weekend. You're going to spend way more just getting there, but that's okay. It's going to be fun, lots of details. You want to head out there. Dwayne, are you coming? You're coming to meetup, right, for sure? I'm coming, but I'm not setting things on fire this year. <laughs> hey, it's Jim, really been two. That. <laughs> it's really been two years, right? Since we uh, the smoke machine and yeah, yeah, two, just that? a small incident with the fire department. It was awesome. It was the highlight of a lot of guys. Um, you know, it is interesting that 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 venue is no longer uh, our venue of choice any longer. After that, I, th- I think I might have. Uh, Blazed a trail, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, literally, the uh, the Microsoft store worked. Uh, not the store, but the offices. They were super good to us last year. I mean, they really treated us. One of the one of the employees came in, sat with us all day. We brought ice cream in. We had great lunch. So you're going to get way more than 25 bucks worth of value. You should think about coming September 17th. So. We're about five weeks away from it. Get signed up. Homeservershow.com will get you in. And then don't forget, we have a Patreon link out at theaverageguy.tv. And right now we have a deal going for a $3 pledge. You get, what did I do with my stickers? I'm, shoot, what did I do with my stickers? How can I, Dwayne, how can I do a show? You need to get stickers. Sticker. I'm, I'm a little upset that. that you don't have your stickers. Oh, here they are. They're, they're back here. I, I, I got. I think somebody was cleaning up at my desk, but, no. but there they go, I right there. Have one yet. Oh, wow. Okay, come over. Come, come. I'm giving one. I'm giving one right now to my wife. She's gonna put that on. There you go. Okay, she's got one. That is so, a wonderful woman right there. If they can put up with you, Mister Jim Carlson. <laughs> See, I put them up, and she says, "Why don't I have one? You can get yours too." I shipped out the first lot of them if you want to get them. $3 pledge gets them to you. I'll email them to you as well as some great other stuff. And uh, if you want to do that, head out to theaverageguy.tv and click on the Patreon link. 3 bucks gets you in and then I'll ship it right to you. Or you can head out to theaverageguy.tv slash support. And then one more reminder, we're starting a, a fantasy football league. So if you're into fantasy football and you want to be a part of it, just send me an email, jim at theaverageguy.tv. Uyghur will get you set up, and uh, we kick off. I think we're going to draft on September 6th or something like that. So make sure you get that in if you want to be a part of the Average Guy Fantasy Football League. Dwayne, you're uh, hardly a guest anymore. I'm, almost, I'm, I'm about ready to call you a host here. Uh, you've been back third time in about, three, in about two months, and it's always good to have you on. You are a true gadget geek in all that you do. Welcome back. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Jim, we don't think we're going to get in trouble for the Olympics in the background, do we? No, we're not, we're not hearing it. And YouTube has not figured out a way to get the uh, camera or picture in picture figured out. So I think we're, I think we're okay. But we do have the Olympics playing if you want to see what's going on. Uh, hopefully you're following the Olympics and all kinds of great gadgets this year to be able to do that. Speaking of that, uh, let's, let's switch real quick to Windows 10 because you're out there with it. You're a Microsoft guy for sure. I think we're past... For the most part, we're past the January 29th deadline. We are past the oh, yeah. August 2nd upgrade. A lot of folks are have been upgrading. I've been hearing of some problems, but in the in the Robinson household, are you guys all upgraded to 10? Is everything on the latest? You're doing all the insider builders. How do you, as a Microsoft employee, how do you handle Windows 10 at home? Windows 10 at home. Well, that's the interesting thing. So in in Microsoft, we've been running Windows 10 longer than than others, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so it's funny because there's like this whole discussion that goes around about Windows 10 and and people getting on it. And the weird part about being a Microsoft employee when it comes to copies of Windows is that you by the time people are starting to talk about how they're going onto it, you're so used to it that it it'd be like Jim, if you went and installed Windows 7 on a machine and started trying to use it as your daily machine you'd be like, this is crazy. And and so if from our end, you know, we're probably, what, a year and a half in and running it. Um, I don't really have, I can't think of a machine that I, that I have in my possession that's not already at 10. I have a few that aren't on anniversary update. Um, but, you know, I, I pretty much fired up most everything and, got it all on uh, anniversary update. I do think I have a kangaroo PC back over here that I haven't, I haven't taken haven't to upgraded the update. Yet. Yeah, I took everything. I put everything on the Insider build for a week, got the, you know, got the latest, um, the 1607 with the 393, I think, dash 51 or 0. .51, and got them all updated and then started taking them off. And so I, the studio PC is off the Insider builds. The kangaroo upstairs is off the Insider build. Going to leave the Surface on the Insider. Surface is a great thing to have on the Insider. It worked really well, especially, yeah. I'd say the last four or five months, I just haven't had any problems with it. I know Surface in general has had little, little, some batter, little battery things and some other stuff going on with it. But for me, it's just yeah. worked perfect. Yeah, but, that's, um, that's actually been the new thing, uh, me and a lot of the guys <laughs> inside of Microsoft, because it used to not be. I mean, really, I don't think people know that even internally, to get access to bits to like install on your machine, they didn't push them as quickly as they're pushing them for the fast ring on the insider builds. I mean, they're literally pushing them so quick now that it started um, being intrusive for you to be able to get work done because you come in to work and you need to do the update. Uh, and so that whole process of the update is actually what's making it harder for people internally to run it on their primary machine because we're pushing updates so quickly. It used to be like once every month or something like that. Now we're seeing it like weekly. Every couple of days. Yeah, every, every <laughs> couple of days you start, somebody's hitting that big red button, which by the way, uh, I have a running joke uh, with, with, I think it's uh, Miss Sarkar, that uh, she is a bot. Um, so <laughs> everyone should please go out to Twitter and refer to Donna Sarkar as a bot. The, bot. Um, the yes, Microsoft bot. Let her know. Dwayne76 says she's a bot. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I'm going to actually go to her, try to go to her office next time I'm in Redmond just to validate that she is truly a bot. Um, <laughs> so, so I would tell you that that's the new interesting challenge is I start seeing that it used to be okay to put all your machines on the um, – in the insider program and just everything's running and I have so many machines that now that would become completely unmanageable mm -hmm. so now I'm having to make the decisions on what machines are on the insider and which ones are just going to stay put because once you go on insider you are a rebuild to come back out so if you were on insider and you got to anniversary update, that was your time to opt out. Right now is the time to opt out, right now. You can yeah. still do it. It still works. So if you're 
if you're going to do that, because I opted two out. I put them in, then opted mm-hmm. them out. I, you know, one was there, and I just left it there. The kangaroo was had been there for a while, and then I opted it out. The the studio, I used the insider to kind of push it. There's a couple of ways I could have got it done. There was, you know, you could have gone to the web and invoked it that way, but um, that seemed easy enough. Put it on the insider build, reboot, get it done a day later, put it up, then move it off the insider build. But yeah, now is the right time to get that done if you want to if you want to jump out of the insider builds. And it is 8:13 p.m. Central Standard Time on on August 11th that we're saying this. Someone in Redmond could push that red button any moment and. Uh, yeah. Take away that option, right? So yeah, uh, we may think next week they may take away that option. So you might want to uh, you might want to act quick on this. Yeah, um, Dwayne. W- one of the cool things, of course, that came with the the anniversary update is inking in a lot of different capacities now. Inking both in sticky notes, you can ink in a sketch pad, and you can now ink on the browser. And sure enough, with the with the surface this weekend, I was trying to help out one of our coaches. He was having trouble understanding where the controls were in our website for some stuff. In, in literally a minute, I could bring, you know, you click the pen, it invokes it, you go to the, you go to the site, typed in, you know, uh, coaching.gallup.com, boom, circled it, saved it, bam, sent it off. And that was, uh, for me, that's kind of been waiting for that on the surface to really work for the inking stuff to really work as well as, as simply as that. I think they've got inking right, especially when you have a surface and a pen. Yeah, it's it's the parental assistance program right there, you know. So uh, <laughs> any now the I I think inking starting to become more mainstream. I, I don't even know if you noticed. I I was watching I'm, I'm watching commercials because of this right here. The uh, Olympics are a commercial ingestion system for the world, and so yes, what? Because nobody wants to watch it and rewind it. You got to watch right. it when it's live, right? Yeah, so yeah. so. Meanwhile, everyone's DVRs are backlogging everything because everyone's watching live TV for the one time in the year or every four years when we do this. Um, but weirdly enough, I, I really, to your point, I'm starting to see like ink in advertisements. You're starting to see like Apple even pushing it big for the iPad Pro. And I don't know if you've seen that new iPad Pro uh, conversation. That is really weird because they're talking about how the iPad is a PC. Mm-hmm. Have you seen this? I've, I've heard of that, yes. And it, yes. It's weird because they did. How much did Steve Jobs do to try to point out that it wasn't a PC? And now they're doing all this work to make it a PC. And I, you, you got to hand it to it. It's Honestly, I believe it's Surface that's done that. And yeah. the exact thing that you're talking about is... You know, they were laughing. Why would you need a stylus? And now they have a pencil. Yeah. That, <laughs> no, that the, it... <laughs> the pen and the surface with the anniversary update is just dynamite. I mean, again, it's that one click. It invokes it. Boom, you bring it in. I mean, I can quickly do some things with ink and get those set up and moved out. It's a big part of my job is helping people do things, you know, when they can't find stuff. And so... It just is an easy thing to do. I used to have to take a pic, do a screenshot, bring it down, put it in paint, put some marks around it, you know, whatever. Now it's just so easy to get done. Speaking of easy as well, extensions have come to Edge, and especially the LastPass extension is there. Oh. It's pretty nice. Uh, LastPass, of course, sponsors us for the, the mobile app. I mentioned that earlier. But really, really, really... It works really, really well. I mean, I have not, I have yet to find a place where LastPass isn't working well in Edge. Have you been messing with that? Yeah. So, so I have to admit something. I have never used LastPass before in my life, and it can And Edge got extensions, and I am now a proud supporter of LastPass. So, went ahead and did the twelve dollar a year thing, and I have to say that. It, the way I do work it, is I have this machine that is like my personal machine, and I feel like I have to have some separation in my office. And then I have another machine that's over here to my other side, which is my work machine with a, a second monitor. So what happens is I swing back and forth between these different machines all the time, and I'll go and be like, oh, darn it, I just need to bring up a bank account or I need to do something. And I can't tell you how 
troublesome it is that I have to remember, oh, I didn't put the passwords in on this one to save it, and it's in this browser. And so I would literally move between machines, Jim, to, to get to the one where I didn't have to re-enter in things. Um, and my wife was like trying to figure out ways to be able to keep up with everything, and this thing has just like simplified the whole thing. And then I had I was like, wait a minute, I heard that they actually do this on phones. <laughs> and I went and I put it on this uh, this phone that we'll talk about in a bit, and was like, oh my god. I don't have to enter in my passwords, <laughs> and, the, and the fact that it works with fingerprint readers and yeah. uh, it's it's a slick solution. It's it's pretty handy, and it was good. I, a lot of people have been talking about it and have wanted it for a long period of time. I rich, I listened to Rich Hay over at Windows Observer, and of course he has been highlighting all the various uh, updates that have been coming, and is saying LastPass not available, and finally available inside Edge. So if you're on the anniversary update, uh, that comes available for you inside Edge. Pretty good browser to use, actually pretty fast. Works great. I mean, if it, now that LastPass is in it, yeah, there's an ad, is there an ad blocker extension? Do you know? Have they gotten, I don't, I don't ever use ad blockers, but do you and, know? There's one. Yeah, so I, I, I installed an ad blocker on one of my uh, copies of Edge, and it, it, it has I think two available right now, um, but you're going to start seeing extensions growing and growing and growing. Um, I mean, the reality is this was the one thing in my world where I really needed to get, you know, it was like the last little thing for IE, other than Google Hangouts that you make me join um, against my will. Um, however, um, <laughs> well, when Skype when Skype gets functionality like this, then maybe we'll talk about it. So, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> well, if you have the right Skype client, well, anyway. So, yeah. I, so what I would say is, um, you know, the, it's pretty much a thing where I had to fire up IE for this Google Hangout to talk to you, and I realized that I have not fired up IE in a very very long time, and and you know. I don't use Chrome uh, at all uh, anywhere. I, I I have I do have something, Jim, that'll make you want to question whether or not I'm alive, and that is I have a Chromebook, and we and and matter of fact, I think I used a Chromebook on an episode with you guys. So the the interesting thing is when I started looking at this, I do use some other. Um, some other technologies, and I, I mean, I have a MacBook back here, so to your point, you know, I'm not a Microsoft-centric necessarily person. I work there, and I would say that m by and large, that is what I have from a technology space, but the Microsoft of new is very cross-platform friendly, and I'm starting to see, like, things like Edge. I'm just waiting on Edge to come out of Windows. And I think that would be a good thing to happen. I don't have any insight on that. I'm not, you know, I, I like I said, I do work there, but it's a good don't question. Really know that it's a good question. I almost ask you that if if you had any insight to when we would when those would get separated. No, I, I mean they don't really talk about that type of stuff um, to you know to, to the field. I'm sure product group people know, but the reality is is that you know. As you start looking at it, I mean, Edge is so much quicker than even Chrome on the Chromebook that I just don't see a need to jump all over to things. The other thing is I went on this whole, when Edge came out, I decided why in the world do I really need all these add-ins and all of this other bloat um, like Flash and stuff like that, right? And so I kind of went for this last bit of time with Windows 10 to see what was life like for a person who didn't, who's not this IT nerd, who knows all about all these extensions that everybody watching this would know about, but what if I just wanted a really fast, lightweight web browser? What would my experience be like? And and I found that Edge is pretty good. It's very quick, and if you kind of some of the stuff you were talking about with the inking components, you know, this last little thing where they added the extensions, I don't really know that, you know, outside of LastPass. Sure, an ad blocker if you're that kind of person that needs that. Um, but for the most part, I, I feel like it's got everything it needs to be successful at this point. 
I don't find myself wanting. I'm sure other power users might, but the average guy. That's Boom. what I did there. Like it. Uh, probably can make edge work for them in their daily task at this point. And I, I don't, and, and the bloat that Chrome has started to do to PCs and kill the performance of it really makes me happy to see us put out a quality product that just absolutely works and isn't causing your machine just to be a slug, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's worth so, a look. I think it's finally worth a look. And I, I, I don't know if I could switch over to it full-time yet, but but uh, it's, it's certainly worth a look from that standpoint. So certainly as we are recording this, uh, Windows 10 has got a lot of stuff going on. Some cumulative updates even came out today, and uh, there's a lot oh. out there. There's a lot out there for you. So make sure... If you, if you haven't been and you're listening to this this weekend, which most of you listen to this over the weekend, uh, may, might be a good weekend to just check your PCs, make sure everything's updated, has done its thing, has gone through its stuff, and, uh, and get it. And if you happen to have one of these, they released a build this week as well, I believe. Yeah, there's like so, five people, Dwayne, who have that in the Hey, world. look, look, here's one. <laughs> right? They do exist, boys and girls. And the, this is actually the 650, by the way, which is a nice little phone. Yeah. Well, I, didn't, I don't use it as my primary, but... Yeah, let's talk. you got some new gadgets coming up. We were going to talk, and in, in, in a couple weeks ago, I said, Dwayne, I'm coming out to talk about Azure, but Dwayne said, you know what? I'd rather talk about gadgets tonight. So let's uh, let's dig in. Let's do the watch first. You picked up a, a second... Is it a second gen? Um, so maybe we should start with the phone, because that would oh, be, right. why would I buy this watch? All right, <laughs> there we go. Let's do it. So, so as most people may know... Um, Again, Microsoft was a longtime Windows Phone user. Um, the phone of choice for Dwayne Robinson, much to the dismay of, shall we say, one uh, Dave. Uh, <laughs> are, you, are you referring to Dave McCabe, maybe? Are, Dave McCabe felt that I was a child <laughs> because of the fact of my selection of... The one, the only iPhone success. And I will tell you that I have used this phone for over a year as a primary device. Okay? I have tried many, many phones, Jim. Jim can attest that I have things such as a OnePlus 2. I have things such as a Nexus 6P, otherwise known as everyone's favorite little Android phone. Uh, and by the way, it's even got an Android update from where I just picked it up. All of these phones have fallen short to be able to live up to the iPhone. So, I found one gem that's better. Okay, what do you got? All right, I, I really, really went back and forth on this thing saw it and found out that my house sold and literally after I found out my house sold I was on the website bought it and it was here <laughs> and and so I have been struggling with this and and I will tell you that one Rob Dentler as well inside the Microsoft ranks is quite interested in this device and that device is are you uh, and by the way I've got a I just got a notification since you're such a weather geek on the front page here that there's another meteor shower outburst coming tonight. Yeah, it's coming on actually tonight and tomorrow night are the best nights if it's not thunderstorming, you know, your way through. But what do you got in your hand there? All right. I feel like a drum roll. Go. This is the one plus three. I love this phone. This thing is amazing. Um I, I I kind of have put up some different things about it on Facebook and maybe on Twitter that some of you may have seen. And I have a hard time um, just coming back and, and, and saying, you know, hey, I love this thing or I don't love this thing. And so this is the first time I'm coming out to say what I really think about it with you, Jim. So, so let me kind of give you the breakdown on what's so good about this thing, right? So... I am now in my role having to potentially travel out of country more frequently. This phone is dual LTE SIM capable. It is unlocked. 
I do not have to worry about what vendor. I can go put a, another SIM card in it. And by the way, they sell it in three versions. They sell it in a North America, uh, European, and an and Asian version of it. And so if you're going to be traveling to a specific location very often and you just need a phone that is dual service, that's going to give you full LTE when you jump across the pond, it, you know, $399, ooh, that's a pretty darn good price for this phone. And and it's not because, you know, oh, it's there's like one thing about it, Jim. The, because the problem I have with the Nexus 6P, so you, you take this Nexus 6P, 5.7 inch screen, this is a 5.5 inch screen, and you compare them and you'll find that this one, that the uh, OnePlus 3 is a little shorter, which means it fits in your pocket better. It's, but you can't tell a big difference between a 5.5 inch and a 5.7 inch screen. All you know is it doesn't like jot out of your pocket every 15 seconds. And then they did it, it, there was this controversial thing about on the Nexus 6P, on the back of it here, it's got this fingerprint reader. And that thing has irritated me from the day I got it. Why, when you are in a car and you, everybody's going to say, well, if you add it as a Bluetooth trusted device, you don't have to unlock it. Yeah, okay, got it, yeah, yeah. But I have to go do that. And guess who rides in a lot of rental cars? Jim Gawson. Mm -hmm. That would be one Dwayne Robinson. Yeah, I bet. And you, let me tell you how big of a pain it is when you got ways or you're trying to jump around, you forget to switch back to your navigation because you made a phone call and your screen locks because of it. And then you're driving down the road and say, I don't know, state like California where it's illegal to pick up your phone and you gotta, you gotta pick it up because you gotta get your finger to the back. So this one, fingerprint reader is right here, boys and girls. And it is fast as it can be. So there is no problems with speed. This thing's got, you know, it's I think it's Snapdragon either 810 or 820. It's got uh, a good GPU in it. It's got six gigs of RAM and it's 64. Yeah, Snapdragon the 820. 20, yep. Yeah, and, and then on top of that, you've got six gigs of RAM in it. And there's some controversy on if it's actually using all six gigs of RAM right now. That's just a software update away, boys and girls. This thing's got the capability to do it. And what I will tell you is that you don't have performance problems. The 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 OnePlus 2, this thing was a hunk of piece of junk when I got it. Now, they have done software updates to the Oxygen OS because if you remember, they moved from Cyanogen to uh, Oxygen OS when they did this phone. I think they had a lot of problems getting this phone where it needed to be because of Oxygen OS. But... If you have a OnePlus 2, I encourage you to go back and revisit this phone because it actually became a useful phone once they did the update. But you take those updates and you take all those fixes and you throw a solid copy of Android on this phone, bigger screen, but not too big. The thickness of this phone, I can't even tell you. It, it, I keep, you see it on like the news and the reviews on it, and everyone's like, oh, yeah. I bet it's just wonderful and thin. This thing, in comparison, this is a Moshi case, and this is the OnePlus 3. It is, I, I don't think you can tell on the picture, it is so much thinner than an iPhone 6S in a slim case with the case on. It is not even comparable, and it weighs less then the iPhone, it fills in the hand because of the distribution of the weight. I'm not sure if it physically is less, but it just feels better in the hand. So I, I, I can't tell you how much I like this thing more than I can tell you that I took the 6S and it's got my secondary SIM in it and I moved to this phone full time. And I actually decided that I love it so much that, um, I've gotten several friends to to buy it. Remember, I think you and I had a conversation about the charging. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, before in pre-show, I asked you. You know, you're like, I don't even put it on a charger at night, and so yeah. you mentioned it charges super fast for you in the morning. Yeah. So, so one thing I will bring up: if you decide to get a OnePlus Three, 
you need to be aware that they will there, there's this cable and there's this power brick and it's called the dash um, kit and when I say that not like a dashboard like D A S H okay mm -hmm. and you can't get away with just having this brick and plugging a USB C cable you have to have the cable from them it's the only place to get the cable is from them so if you have this combo which by the way the phone comes with one and I went ahead and bought a second one um, and I think it was like 25 30 bucks for a, for a second one which is fairly reasonable for for the whole kit when I go to bed at nights I don't charge this phone I'll wake up in the morning to gym and my phone will be at 56 percent charge to start the day that would freak most common gadget geek people completely out I come downstairs after my morning looking at Facebook and checking all my notifications and what my day is gonna be like I do all that stuff and now I'm starting to get kinda low Jim I'm start I get a little shaky you can see it in my hand right I'm just freaking out and I walk downstairs and I will plug this thing in at my desk as I'm on my way to go get my kids breakfast um, to get them out of the house to get on the school bus uh, the process for me to get my kids a pop tart in the in the machine pop it out feed it to them and tell them to eat it and then hey you gotta get your bag and get out the door and then I walk back by my office and I grab my phone out in that amount of time this phone is fully charged well so, first of all let me just say kudos to you for getting your kids pop tarts that's 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 not as good of a charge as you're getting off your phone by the way <laughs> not great nutrition occasionally but. pecan twirls <laughs> 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 but uh, I see on their site what they what they say is uh, 30 minutes will get you 63 percent uh, oh, charge, right? And so that's still that's still pretty good. I mean, it, it's it, generous. You know, I, I mean, I would say that's that's um, that's um, not it the reality. It, yeah, that's or way over. under. That's okay. way under. I would tell you that if you're at about 50 percent on this phone and you plug it in in about 15 minutes, it'll be. If not 100%, it'll be in the 90s. Pretty darn close. And so, so it's it's yeah, it's pretty cool. darn fast. Yeah. Well, I think that's the the next step we have to make on phones is just getting them charging faster. And uh, and so I think a lot you're going to see this a lot in in phones coming of getting folks. Uh, uh, <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm talking. No, it's fine. We're good. Man. It's good. We're a family show, so family can enter anytime they want. So, yes. Yeah. I just think we're gonna. I just think we're moving in a direction, you know, you and I both are on and we've had discussions about the band and I've gone to the point, I mean, that's not a great charging device, so it, it charges okay, but what I've found, yeah, and I've got mine on the charger right now, the right rhythm for me in the band is to put it on the charger at night. I don't use it to sleep. I, and you know what, I, I threw that out there and a lot of guys who have it said, I think including you, I don't really need it at sleep. That's, I mean... What are you really yeah. going to do with the sleep data for the most part? So I know from Know time that you time, sleep crappy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, from time to time, I'll throw it on, maybe leave it overnight on a weekend or something just to kind of to measure the sleep on it. But I've gotten into a pattern now where it's a great watch, just charged every night. And yeah. throw it on, and I've been tracking bike and running and weightlifting and, I mean, all kinds of cool stuff, plus all the notifications and They've recently made an, uh, an update that allowed for more apps on the watch than less, so that's great. You can get more on there, and, yep. and I get a lot of comments on it. So it's it's one of those things where charging is a super important, you know, has become a super important feature and that things need to charge fast. Well, and, and kind of to touch on the band for a second, you know, like I said, I've been using the iPhone for for over a year now, right? And I will tell you that it is, in my opinion, this is my opinion, I'm a Microsoft employee, so my opinions may be somewhat skewed in that direction, but I will tell you that the Band 2 in conjunction with an iPhone is an amazing combination. It's pretty cool. And I would say that people who run around and say, oh, well, I've got an Apple Watch, okay, I'm sure that your Apple Watch does more than the Microsoft Band does. But you also... A lot of people I know are buying the ones with the metal bands on them and stuff and paying $750, $600. We're talking about a device that's $179 bucks 
right? And it actually does some things better uh, depending on what you're looking for. But just, I stopped wearing a Rolex to wear this thing because when I was going through the airport, I wanted to be able to not have to pick the phone out of my pocket to pause the audio and go to the next track. And I listened to, through groove music on it. It works with all of it. I, I can track my my steps and all of the stuff. It's just a really an amazing device for the money. And I, I don't think people, everybody tries to compare it to a $700 Apple Watch. And the reality is it's not a $700 Apple Watch. It's not even an Android smartware device that cost $400. It cost what, $175 right now? Yeah, it's, and, it's, in, a, it's in that uh, Fitbit category now. Yeah, and if you compare it to a Fitbit or any of these fitness bands that are out, I'm not going to say that they're not good and there aren't good bands. I'm just going to say that it's it's in the top tier, right? Especially when you start seeing things like, you know, the app expansion that's coming to it, uh, the fact that <laughs> it keeps hollering at me, though, that I need to put some sunscreen on. Um, so I got the little UV app, and apparently they've tweaked that now, where if you're out in the sun, it's like, hey, moron, put on some sunscreen. Hey, so, the, other, the other day I did a really long workout. I was out there for about two hours, and it said, you might want to think about fueling up. You know, you haven't had any food in a while. You might want to, you know, it, it sensed that I had been working out for a long time. And it was like, yeah, about this time you should, and really it was a little late, you know, really when you're doing long workouts, about an hour you know, about an hour in, if you're going to go two hours or more, you need to start kind of fueling up about an hour in. And so I was pretty impressed. I was like, you know, one of those things I get used to checking to when I'm biking, I can just yep. turn my wrist like this and, and it'll buzz for every mile. And you can just kind of check your, you know, how are my splits doing? Boom, you're back in. And oh, so yeah. it's got a great bike app. I a, really like the a, bike app. From a fitness perspective, I really think that's, that is – where things need to be, right? And and when you talked about the battery charging, everyone kept saying that the battery didn't last that long. On my band, for the last year, I can go two days without charging the band. I don't do it. I charge it every night. But in that case where you forgot to charge it one night, you can take it and, you know, it, it'll make it through the day. Now, granted, early afternoon, day two, when you get home, you need to put the thing on the charger. Yeah. But, you know, if can it make it through the eight-hour work day until you get back? Sure. And sure. For sure. I, I just, well, I just really I, think it's a good I just, deal. I just put mine on the charger right before the show started. So we were at maybe 40 minutes. So it's been sitting on the charger for, well, let's just say 40 minutes, 100%. So I used it all day. Uh, I didn't work out with it today. So probably not as charged as it could have been. Yeah. I mean, it was probably... 50%, maybe maybe a little bit more than that, but charged pretty fast for, for getting that done. So, If um, only I could use the golf app. <laughs> I've been dying dying to do it, but because of the whole house situation, yeah, no. I haven't been able to play golf. No. So, so, Jim, okay. I think we need to talk about... The other watch? I, because I am now an Android user... Hey, real quick, hold on. Before you do that, hold on. Uh, we had a couple questions in the chat room. So sure. one was statement. Mark had said, Mark Robson had said, Pebble's a quick charge like that too. I think it's about a half an hour for, for, for a full charge. And that would be true. Pebble's get really light, very functional, would charge very, very fast. And then Drashna asked, how does the Microsoft Band work with the Android? Have you connected it to Android? Oh, yeah. Or is it even yeah. iPhone? Yeah, so in the time frame when I went to, uh, I, I move, I have a strict rule. I cannot make a decision on whether a phone is a good phone or a bad phone 100% until I've run it for at least, I, I say that I need to run it for a month, right? And while I'm raving for the OnePlus 3, that's why you haven't seen me write something, right? Is because right now I'm, I'm over the moon, but know that I won't really write something up and say people should buy this thing until... Um, until I've used it for a month. And I also have to travel with it to be able to see it. Yeah. So in the time frame where I have the OnePlus 2, I mean, I'm sorry, the Nexus 6P here, the Nexus 6P, I ran this phone for a month, traveled with it. I had the iPhone as a backup in my, in my bag, and I did pair the, the band to it to, to use it. 
and I would say it, it works fine. There's no real difference between it. And actually, one of the new things that they're released at, uh, after I got done with uh, my run on it is now you can actually call up Cortana on it, uh, which you can't do on the iPhone. So, so I would say that if you're looking for equivalent functionality or as close as you're going to get to a Windows phone with a Microsoft band, Android's your platform to be able to pull that off. Um, but I would not say that there's enough difference between it that would make me choose my phone driven by the band's capability. Uh, it's very similar. Yeah, just know it doesn't, either phone does not limit the band in any way. You get all the full functionality of the band. A lot of it's in the reporting and the, in the UI, uh, Android versus iPhone and the UI. But to be honest with you, I only use the UI on the phones to check the data quickly. If I'm going to really dig into a ride or a run, I'm going to go to the website because it's really going to contain all the all the information that came off the the uh, the band is going to be on the website. So that's yeah. kind of I would I, I I'd agree with you. Don't pick the phone based on the band; it'll work either way. Pick the phone based on what you want to get out of it. It'll and, work. And, it'll work with the band. And the band. Is, you're not going to be disappointed with a $175 investment on the Band 2 on Android or on iOS. It's, it's remarkably good. And, and it, I would even go as far to say it's competitive with the smartwatches uh, that are higher than it's than where it sits. You know, it's, it's really not meant to compete there, but I think it does a good job. It holds its own. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, listen, I'm out working out all the time. It has been great for me. I mean, it's way out of I mean, when we think about a Fitbit. Now, I haven't used the newer Fitbit, so I don't know, but I like yeah. it. I like it better than I liked when I was on the old Fitbits uh, from from that standpoint. And like I said, I bought it at the two forty nine price point when it was brand new. And yeah, I, I don't. I don't really regret it. I mean, at this point, yeah, sure, I'd like to. You know, I'd like to. You know, if I if a if a band three comes out, I'll probably wait six or nine months for the price to drop instead of being an early adopter because the band two is so good. But uh, so, I don't. You know, so I don't you think brought I... you brought something to my attention that on our last call, the or our last time we talked, where you said your band was like just turning itself off. It seemed to be getting lower battery, so I was trying to get it a full, because I was sleeping with it, so I was trying to get a full day out of it, and it kept, I, I don't know, it kept dropping, and I would, it would reboot all the time. And I have yep. found since I charge it every night, that has stopped. So I don't know, there still could be an issue with low battery. So it was weird, because you told me that, and it never happened to me, and then it happened the week after, so you jinxed me, but then there was an update that came out, and I and I have not have it have. It has not happened since the update after yeah. our last discussion. Yeah. It did it to me the other day. I'll be honest. I charged it all night. I put it on. I got to work in the morning, and it was off. And it needs that battery charger to kind of reset it. Um, yep. and, I, and I do think that might be a hardware problem. It works 25 times out of – I mean, 24 times out of 25. So I don't yep. really worry about it. Should I take it to the Microsoft Store and get a new one? Maybe. I don't know. Dwayne, I just, yeah. you recommended it, that. They moved our Microsoft store out of Omaha, so I, it's not easy anymore. Which, oh, by the way, I did hear from someone uh, at Microsoft that had um, had a Microsoft band, and I've heard a rumor that some people have had, like, a tear up yeah, in here. This will know, crack. Know that I, went, we went to the Microsoft, like, pop-up over in Bellevue, because my friend did not believe me that if you took it to the Microsoft store and it was still under a year, they'd just replace it. They will do that. So if people have a problem with it or whatever, know that you know you got a year of it just being replaced. But you can also buy, I think it's like an 18-month plan that they will replace it anyway, um, which isn't really expensive. So all in all, I would just say great investment, worth the money. Uh, it's a solid device, and for the for the money, you're just not going to beat yeah. it. Great so, workout device, for sure. Yep. I like it. Oh, and by the way, there was one last thing to show you is that I did also buy the Bamboo back for the uh, OnePlus 2. I think these things are only like 12 bucks. so you when you order the phone. Um, so go ahead and pick up a few of those. They actually work really well, and if you have a magnetic um, mount in your car like I do, um, it works perfect. It'll it'll you can put the little metal thing inside here, and it doesn't stand off the back of the phone in a bad way or get in front of the camera or anything. Yeah. 
So and that's what I do on my iPhone. That's you can stick one of those to the back of that. That's all I've done there is stick it yep. to the back. So Jim, okay. you need to go get a OnePlus three. However, oh, I'm thinking about it. Because of the fact that I got Android and I started running Android, I've been interested in some of the Android smartware. And so I did also pick up this new little tidbit, which is a Moto 360 Gen 2. I ordered online a Gen 2 from Amazon, and they sent it through like a certified refurb thing. Um, Just show the phone or show the watch. Show the watch again. There you go. Oh, I was on there. Hold on. I was on there for a second, so I sent you... I sent you a tweet. Let's see if we can watch the tweet show up. See, there we go. It should show up on the phone there, right? I... Oh, so you won't be able to see it. Oh, really there, it there you go. Um, so the, the way that the the watch works is sometimes you can't see, it, like it'll it'll pop up like what you're seeing here in color, but it's because I'm swinging it. Uh, if it if you have it sitting on um, sitting on your on your wrist. It does the same thing like a, a, the old Lumias used to do, where it goes into just the black and white version so that it doesn't eat the battery. So if you look at it, it doesn't have to turn on when you look at it. Like, a, like the Microsoft Band, when you flip it up, it turns on and you can see the time, right? But most of the time, the screen's off. In this case, the screen is on, and it says the time. And I'm just, the problem is, is every time I move it, it's going to do it. Um, it... it what will happen is it will switch over to color once you do it and get you – and each of the different watch faces, and you can put different watch faces on it. And and the thing that made me really interested in this is that Microsoft has an Outlook client sort of that works on this thing, and it has a watch face that is Outlook-based. And if you live and breathe by your calendar like that, like I do, this thing is really impressive. You can choose the color of the bezel. You can choose the color of the back plate of the of the device. You can choose the band, whether you want it to be leather or silver, whether it's black or gold or all these different things. So if you go to their website, you can see really some interesting things. Uh, a lot of people will talk about the battery life and um, of it. And the battery life, the way that I, I have seen it, is in line with what I've seen in the reviews of it, which is... The first day that you get it, you will get a day, and that's because you're going to sit there and screw with it constantly. Okay, let's just be honest. <laughs> you're going to play with it and be in, it, trying to figure out the menus and all that type of stuff. But what really ends up being um, the key to it is now I can get I could get two days off the battery. Um, the way that it charges, so there's you know I, I go back to the thing that everybody likes to hold as the as the holy grail, and that's the Apple Watch, right? Everyone's like, I've got some friends that even go to the uh, meetup that, you know, are the eye sheep that have went and got the watch. I'm just kidding. <laughs> they, they, uh, they, they went out and got the Apple Watch, and so I've, I've got to experience that it's, it's a good watch. It's absolutely a, a good smart watch. It costs twice what this one does. Um, this one, uh, I got the 42 millimeter. So some people might wonder, 42, 46. The refurb that I tried to order Gen 2 uh, came in as a Gen 1, even though everything said Gen 2. So just be careful on Amazon for that. They have a 46 millimeter black one that they'll say they'll sell you for 199. When I got it, it was a Gen 1. The key way to know that it's Gen 1 versus Gen 2 is right here at the top of it. It has a different way that the band connects. So make sure you look online and you see what the pictures look like so that you don't pay money thinking you're getting a Gen 2 and you're getting a Gen 1. When I got it, the 46 millimeter was way too big for my wrist, and not only that, it was a Gen 1 instead of a Gen 2. I can put it on my wrist to show you the difference uh, for a 42. 42 millimeter cost you brand new, um, so if you look at it, it's kind of hard to put my arm this way. A lot of people look at the how does it look? But it looks really nice. So if you get the Gen the Gen 1 version, it's not as good. I mean, you're going to be upset with what you get. 
it's slower, it's not as uh, functional. So I, I would highly recommend looking at the G2. It's about 329 for a 42 millimeter with a metal band. You can get it cheaper if you're willing to go with a non-metal band. You go with a leather band and so forth. Um, but all in all, I've been really happy with this thing. Um, it's very customizable. I didn't realize that you could you can make your own watch faces with it. This is not something you do with an Apple Watch. You take what they give you and you might get a Mickey Mouse on it, right? But in this case, what you can do is you can arrange them and then what you'll find is in the Android Smartware store, there's a ton of different watch faces that you can download for it, but a lot of the apps have their own. And you can make it where it can look, um, you, you can make it where it looks many different ways. I also believe that the navigation is a little more intuitive and a little less complex than the Apple Watch. You don't have the little dial that spins and all that other stuff. Uh, and then the one last thing that was kind of interesting that it took me a little second to figure this out, Jim, because I was like, why is it doing this? And when you take it and you put it on your wrist, you can shake down the menus. You can navigate it all <laughs> one-handed. And that was pretty impressive. I didn't know that it was doing this, and it's it's kind of a good you know a good experience in general. But um, I have found that occasionally I do this thing where I you know not having a watch, I <laughs> and I look at it and I go, oh crap, I I you, I'm you in the menu. The menu. Yeah, but the menu. Um, but all in all, I would say it's it's been a pretty good purchase. This thing is only about four days old with me, so I will reserve judgment on whether it's worth the money. Again, I have to go for a month with it. I really need to travel with it. It supposedly will let me, with a Delta app, put my boarding pass on the front of it, um, which is something I really, really want to be able to do. I have tested audio control, inc including with Groove, and volume control, next song, and even album art shows up hmm. uh, from a third-party music uh, service on Android. So, it it also works with an iPhone, but I've heard that it doesn't it pales in comparison with Android. So eventually, I'll move back over to an iPhone for a bit, and then I will um, pair this thing up with it to give you guys sort of uh, some update on it to make sure that you know what you do. Um, and it it says oh, and so someone in the chat room put in there. Um, that there's even an app called Facer that makes it where you can have make different watch faces for it. It looks like they had a, a V1. If you did have a V1, the way that the band connected to the bottom of the V1 made that thing look like it stood up this far off your wrist. The new way that they built this makes this thing look like it's super thin on your wrist is what it looks like in comparison. So, so I would highly encourage people to not look at the V1 and look at the V2 only. Uh, even if you can get a V1 for 99 bucks to $100, I think it's the same sort of thing with the Microsoft Band. You might be able to get cheaper solutions, but you're probably going to be a lot happier um, with one. And one thing I have found, Jim, is that the reason I like it is because it looks like a watch. <laughs> It actually looks like a watch. So the the band. <laughs> the way you said that was funny. It looks like a watch. <laughs> you know, it, it it's round. It's it it, yeah. it literally yeah. looks a lot like a watch. And so yeah. people don't look at you like a mega nerd. Yeah. Running around, like you said, the conversation piece on the band. A lot of people ask you about the band because they're like, "What is that thing on your wrist?" Mm -hmm. Where I, I probably won't get the questions on this one, but you know, if you're fashion oriented. It's it's a nice thing, but it is still double, roughly double the price of a band. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that it's that much more functional, but it is. It's nice. It's pretty. <laughs> yeah. It, no, it looks good. They they've got some good options for it. It is. I mean, there's just it's built well. I think they've learned a lot in the process, and uh, and it's a good looking watch. You know, the weird thing is we went through a phase where we just nobody would spend money on watches. Oh, you'd have some people who'd buy some really expensive ones, but now you have guys who wouldn't have dropped. You know, they would never would have dropped 500 bucks on a regular watch, and there you could have bought. I mean, 15 years ago, you could have spent 500 bucks on a really nice Swiss or, you know, whoever was making the great watches in those days. But today, those same guys, because it's got all this stuff you can do with it, 
drop in four or five hundred bucks on a watch. Easy. You know, the way I would I would compare this is that it's not. It, it, if you think about these smart watches and stuff, these are kind of like the people who might buy a Seiko or an Omega, something like that. That's you know that three to five hundred dollar watch world. You'll be okay with this. You know, it's not for the guy who you know, has to have a Rolex and it's all about the the style of the watch and in the name and, and things like that, you know, and, and you know, it, it you don't charge a Rolex, for example. There is no battery, right? So you have to buy a special box so it winds the darn thing, right? So just my point is that's jewelry, right? That's what that is. This is functional. And I would say that I'd choose it over a Seiko or something like that. But I don't know that I would say that, you know, if you're going to accept some sort of major award, I don't think I want the Casio calculator watch on my on my wrist. I, I'm going to go with the thing that, you know, is more jewelry oriented. Yeah. So so it's just what is it, what kind of person are you and really think about <laughs> what you want. I, I'm sorry. I love this this comment. I have to I have to give. Uh, Brian, Brian, his his uh, his kudos. Y yes, Brian. All you need is a big Velcro strap for your iPhone 6s, and and there you go. Just take you one have of those the new straps. Apple Watch. Yeah. Take one of those arm straps and bring it down. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. It's got to be like this. <laughs> like, <it's sitting> <laughs> so, so all in all, again, Jim, I, I think the interesting thing in this whole conversation is that most people, whenever they know that I'm a Microsoft employee. Would think that I'd be a very much a micro, uh, a Windows Phone kind of focused person, and what I would tell you is that that kind of Microsoft is not really there that much anymore, right? It's actually easier to get things done in Microsoft these days on the uh, other platforms to some degree because there we've got tons of apps in these spaces. the The app launcher that I run on Android is Arrow. And it's the only way that I want my phone to work. It's so much more efficient than the other launchers. You know, I'm running Outlook on it. I'm running the whole Microsoft gamut. And so if you have been holding off and you're like that Windows phone person and you're trying to figure out where to go, um, you really, I, I don't think you can go wrong either direction at this point. Uh, the work that's been done on Android in this past few, like I, I would even go as much as the last six to seven months has made it where I feel like it's kind of become on par with with the iOS platform. Um, you know, I, I still believe that there's a place for some Windows Phone. I think there's going to be some good opportunities to go back into that ecosystem. I keep one and I keep it up to date. Um, I switch over to it, but part of what I and my role and what I do, I need to really understand all these different devices and where they play, what their strong suits are, and what they're not. And even if I'm trying to make a competitive agreement or competitive play for why a Windows Phone for a particular business case is a good is a good fit, but in the end, you know, like I said, if if you're if you're on that fence, you're trying to make a decision. Um, I think on Android, make darn sure you get a good phone. Um, my biggest complaint around the Nexus 6P, I this thing, when you plug a set of headphones into it, if you're an audiophile, you're going to hate this thing. It sounds like a tin can compared to an iPhone. The way that the OnePlus 3 sounds when you listen to it, and this is, I, I think, a compliment, is it sounds like an iPhone with bass boost enabled. So it's got a little bit more bass than an iPhone, but the cl clarity of the sound and the quality coming out of it is is top notch. And you just can't say that on the 6P. And I know Dave McCabe is a big fan of this phone. I went out and bought this phone and it was all I could do to make one, one month with it, Jim. I, I really, and I kept pulling the iPhone out to be able to do things, to listen to music because the thing just sounded so horrible uh, with music. Dwayne, one more question before we wrap it up uh, here. This always goes so fast. Uh, Surface Phone, any, uh, and I'm not asking for inside <laughs> information, but uh, from what you know, if, if we see a Surface Phone in the next 6 to 12 months, uh, does it, is it going to be a hit like the Surface? 
Uh, that's a wonderful <laughs> question. Um, uh, someone says they only listen to podcasts on the phone. Just so you know, there's a Pocket Cast app that runs right here on the smartwatch, by the way. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> so that's one thing that I don't get on the... But uh, you're controlling, you're not listening to, you're not plugging anything into your watch. You're you're controlling the Pocket Cast app on your watch that's going to the... Yes, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, sure. yes. Sorry. Uh, yeah, you, it doesn't have wireless headphones. Yeah. So, so don't the avoid the question. Surface phone. phone. Yeah, I know you're trying to corner <laughs> me here a little bit. So here's what I will say. I have no information whatsoever on the Surface Phone. I have no idea what they're going to bring out. I, even if there was an opportunity for me to know, they wouldn't tell me. <laughs> so they'll tell you, Jim, before they'll tell me. Yeah, they're not but, telling me anything, but yeah. But I will tell you that I just don't see that. I'm starting to come around to a realization that we can talk about it at a later date on a different podcast that the phone has now become the PC. And when I say that, I don't mean that the PC is a bad thing or a good thing or that the phone is a good or a bad thing, but I really think people need to start thinking about the fact that as the PC was the center of the universe, the phone now has become, there is things in the IoT world that are happening that are the demise of the phone. And so whether or not Surface Phone is a hit or not a hit is really kind of, in my opinion, somewhat irrelevant in the fact that I think the days of the phone being the center of the universe, just like you would say, so Jim, you think about it. If you went to my daughter, who's nine years old, and you told her to get music on that phone, that she would have to plug it into the PC to be able to make it work, she would look at me like I was stupid, right? Why? Why can't it just get the music, right? I think we're starting to get there with an IoT. And I don't think people necessarily are all there yet and know the tsunami of innovation that's a, that is on its way. And I'm not saying that Microsoft specifically is doing it or that there's other or anything from that perspective. I think it's just a realization of the market evolving and everyone's going, well, what's the next big thing? And phones are kind of played out. Um, so if it does come out and it's just a phone, then I don't really know if it's going to move anybody. But if it comes out and it, it transverses beyond a phone, I think that might be interesting and that might be where it makes sense. Yeah. But I also believe that the whole concept, I, just the same as someone might look at, look at me and say, you know, like I, my kid, my kid's kids would look at me and go, oh my God, you had this big, you know, you had to carry around that big fat laptop is how my kids would look at it if I showed them an old laptop. You know, to to me that was fairly innovative that you could carry it around. I think that my kids' kids are going to look and go, you carried around a big slab of battery in your pocket? What, what were you thinking? Why did you have to have that when everything around you can just do it on its own? And so I really think that there's a little device that I'll just show for a second. And I think this device is the device that is the next iPhone. For those who are on, who are on audio, what are you showing? I am showing a Raspberry Pi. So I believe that the fact that computing power has gotten to the point of processing in this cheap that anything can become smart enough to run apps or run services. And when you start thinking like that, it changes the way you just think in general. And I, I think that's an interesting thing for us to talk about at a later date. Well, I think we're, we'll have you back on. We were, we're going to talk about some of it, but I think there's some other cooler stuff still coming. And so we'll have you back, talk a little bit more about that in the cloud and what Microsoft's doing around that. I think there's some really interesting things on Azure and in the cloud space and when we think of when we think of machine learning and all some of those things that are going on in Azure, when we bring it to the average guy, I think up until now it really hasn't applied. Yeah, I think it's starting to apply. I mean, I, yeah. I think we're starting to see it. 
So we'll have to save up our pennies and uh, make sure you're ready to go when we uh, when we get there. Yeah, a Raspberry Pi is a really expensive device, man. <laughs> <laughs> we have to save up your pennies, right, to be able to get there. Well. With that, uh, we'll call this a show. Dwayne, hang around uh, for some post-show. I forgot to mention early in the show, and he left. I think he got mad at me. But, uh, of course, Mike Weger was out tonight, and uh, Mike is moving in this week to his new place. Dwayne sold his place. That's always a good, that's always a good deal. So he's, He can buy new toys. <laughs> he can come and, uh, and uh, lavish us all with uh, drinks and food at the meetup. So thanks, Dwayne, in advance for that. But we... Oh. <laughs> the. Uh, that's, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. And then, uh, of course, Mike's out uh, moving in tonight. So uh, Dwayne came, and Mike, uh, we wish you the best of luck as you're moving in, and congratulations on a new place. And so that where is that's where Mike Weaker is. He's got a really <laughs> nice place too. We're gonna... Yeah, and just to dispel the rumor, no, I did not sell my house to Mike. <laughs> yeah. No, right. That would have been cool though. That it would have been. He would have gotten a really cool house. Had to move though, but uh, hey, at least you got it sold. Don't forget, uh, for those of you, we mentioned it early in the show. If you haven't gotten your sticker yet, uh, head over to the average and uh, jump in Patreon. If you do the three dollar pledge, I'll send you a sticker, f- a, a limited edition. We're just going to do thirty. If they don't sell, I'll probably never do it again. So, if you're interested in doing that, jump over there and get that done. Um, and I'll be bringing whatever I have left over to the meetup. So if you're coming to the meetup, September 17th, homeservershow.com. Look for the meetup link there. Of course, you can talk, contact me, send me an email, jim at theaverageguy.tv. You know, Twitter is at jcollison. Theaverageguy.tv platform, both web and media hosting, still powered by Maple Grove Partners. Get secure, reliable, high-speed hosting from people you know and you trust. A great WordPress, a, gr- a great place to keep your WordPress instance, and Christian knows how to secure that stuff down pretty well. Visit maplegrovepartners.com. Plan start at 10 bucks. We'll also thank LastPass again for their sponsorship, a new sponsorship for next year for home the Home Gadget Geeks app. And so head out to HomeGadgetGeeks.com. If you haven't tried LastPass, head out to their site. Again, it's free if you're on desktop. It's free if it's on mobile. You only pay if you decide to blend the two together. And why wouldn't you? Dwayne, it's 12 bucks a year. Why we can we spend? Well, here we talk about a hundred and you know two hundred dollar devices. 12 bucks a year. Come on. Come it's on, well guys. worth it. It is definitely worth it, and it gets all your passwords together. Makes it super easy to get things. And and and, and by the way, Microsoft and I now love some LastPass. So. <laughs> now compatible in Edge. So if you've been waiting for that to uh, to work in Edge, it is working indeed. Don't forget, if you're shopping on Amazon, use the Amazon affiliate link, theaverageguy.tv/amazon. Best way to just bookmark that Amazon dot or uh, theaverageguy.tv/amazonca if you're going to purchase in Canada for our Canadian listeners. And we'd love to have you do that. One last reminder, sign up for the newsletter. Go to theaverageguy.tv slash newsletter. And everything that uh, we're doing that weekly now, and if you've missed back episodes, you can see what's in the newsletter. It's not very much. Literally take you five minutes to read the whole thing. But the best part is at the bottom, it's got a list of things that are coming up, the shows, the next four weeks of shows that are coming up. I am going into recruiting cycle, and so September and October will be a little thin. And we'll have some, I'm, I'm uh, going to be interviewing some guys at the Heartland Developer Conference, and so we'll be filling those in, not live on Thursday, but you'll be getting your webcasts on Saturday. As I have information on those, I'll put them in, the, in, those, uh, in that newsletter so you know it's coming up, and uh, you can always stay on top of the things that are happening. And if you give me some feedback on that newsletter, if you want to hear more or less or whatever, let me know. Love to hear about it. We are live out here every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, at theaverageguy.tv slash live. We'll be back uh, next week with some, you know, some more. We just kind of keep, we just kind of keep hitting it here. And if you had the newsletter, you'd know. I should just open the newsletter and look, but I'll open my notes here really quick. Oh, we got some good ones coming up. I think as we think about the coming weeks, uh, we've been looking forward to this one with Dwayne. Next week. Uh, a guy you haven't met before, JC, is going to come on. He's going to talk about this reset plug. So talk about an IoT device. It does one function. It monitors your Wi-Fi, and if it goes down, it resets the switches for your Wi-Fi so it'll reboot. So if you're away from home and you have some Wi-Fi trouble and you just need to reboot, bam. This We're going to talk, <laughs> we're gonna talk about – no, we're not going to talk about a USB – Surface. No, it's the, it's the Surface Phone. <laughs> that's the yeah. Surface Phone. So that's coming up. The Reset Plug uh, is coming up. JC is going to be on to talk about that. Then right after that, Mike Howard and Mark Robson will be on. We're going to talk about barbecue tech. So all kinds of – I'm sure – Barbecue tech? Barbecue grill tech, yes. 
Oh my God, I'm in on this. It's going to be awesome. You will not want to miss that one. Uh, and then out for a week uh, traveling, and then Chad uh, Bostick is going to come on. Uh, Chad does Hello Tech Pros. He had me on his show. I'm having him on. He's a podcasting geek, and so I'm sure we're going to talk about some podcasting gear as well as other geekery that go along. So that's what's coming up. Don't forget, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, out at theaverageguy.tv slash live. And with that, we'll say good night, everybody. <laughs>